Hello, Cell and Genetic Biology 230 here at Tuskegee University. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford, and I am presenting Chapter 12.1. Let's begin with a brief overview of the key roles of cell division. Uh, there are a couple of roles for cell division. One of them is uh, it's the ability of organisms to produce more of their own kind. And of course, this is one of the ways that living things are distinguished, distinguished from non-living things. Is that, that organisms that have the ability to produce more of their own kind are actually living. So we talked about reproduction, and this is a key role, cell division. And it's important to note that the continuity of life is based on the reproduction of cells. And that is, the term for the reproduction of cells is cell division. Multicellular and unicellular organisms, they differ in terms of cell division. So a unicellular organism can divide and then re reproduce the entire organism. The division of one cell will produce the entire organism. Multicellular organisms, on the other hand, multicellular, they depend on this cell division for reproduction. They depend on it for growth. And they also depend on, depend on it for repair because cell division is such an integral part of the cell cycle. So in terms of the life of a cell, it goes from its own formation to its own division. Now, once again, uh, cell division is important. It's important for reproduction, for growth and development, and also for tissue renewal. So in terms of reproduction, I mentioned to you that that differs, whether it's unicellular or multicellular organisms, but it does occur, and it separate, distinguishes the living from non-living things. In terms of growth and development, um, as a human being, as an animal, you, you reproduce as you grew from um, an embryo in your mother's womb and you began to develop in your mother's womb. And now as you um, are, are a college student, um, you may not necessarily be growing, but your hair is still growing and dividing for most of us. Uh, your skin cells are sloughing off or coming off in the shower. They have to be uh, renewed. Um, some of your cells are becoming damaged. Skin cells sometimes become damaged uh, and they have to be repaired. Um, okay, and so we have this, all of these going on uh, at some point in, our, in this life cycle. Reproduction, growth and development, and also tissue renewal. Now, concept 12.1 is as follows. Most cell division results in genetically identical daughter cells. So you must understand that most cell division results in daughter cells that are going to have uh, identical genetic information and that's in the form of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Now um, an exception to this rule is meiosis or meiosis some people call it. And this is a special type of division that can produce both sperm and egg cells. Now, let's take a look at um, how our how genetic material is organized. <clears throat> so, when a cell is not dividing, each chromosome, as you see here, each chromosome uh, is in the form of a long, thin chromatin fiber. Now, uh, before the cell division, the chromatin is going to condense and it's going to coil and it's going to fold and it's going to make a small package and um, each duplicated chromosome is going to consist of two sister chromatids, which is what you see here. Each one of these is a sister chromatid and they contain identical copies of chromosomes DNA. These chromatids are, they're initially attached by um, adhesive proteins and what you see here, of course, is the centromere. Okay, so we have chromatids, okay, and the centromere. And this 
entire structure is a chromosome. So all the DNA in a cell constitutes the genome. Okay, now a genome can consist of a single DNA molecule that's going to be in prokaryotic cells or a number of DNA molecules that's commonly found in eukaryotic cells. Now, DNA molecules, again, in a cell are packaged into chromosomes. So what you're seeing here, I love this diagram, it illustrates the DNA double helix uh, and then it illustrates how this DNA then is um, how the chromosomes then are composed of this DNA. Eukaryotic chromosomes again consist of chromatin and I talked about this earlier how it's very condensed and when the cell is not dividing that um, each chromosome is actually in the form of these chromatin fibers when a cell is not dividing. So this one shows you the nucleus and it kind of shows, shows the chromosomes that have been formed here and here, the nucleolus, the nuclear envelope, and the nuclear pores um, are shown here. And you should rem remember this and this structure from um, previous lectures when we talked about the, the various cells, uh, organelles that exist within the cells. Now, <clears throat> each uh, eukaryotic species has a number, a characteristic number of chromosomes in each cell um, nucleus. So in your somatic cells, now what are somatic cells? They're your non-reproductive cells. So your skin cells, your hair cells, your these are non-reproductive cells. They're, they're going to have two sets of chromosomes, so they'll have 46. Okay. The gametes, on the other hand, are reproductive cells. They're going to have half as many chromosomes as a somatic cell. Okay. What are the reproductive cells? They're the sperm cells for the male and they're the egg cells for the female. So the egg cells, the eggs have 23 chromosomes. The sperm have 23 so that when mating occurs, you can combine the 23 from the male and the female to mate 46. And then that um, uh, combination is so unique that now you have a genetically unidentified, unidentical uh, individual, of course. Now, um, in terms of the distribution of the chromosomes during your karyotic cell division, in order to um, review that, we first have to take another look at the chromosome. Um, so, whenever a cell gets ready to divide, the DNA is replicated, right? And the chromosomes are going to condense. That I said like three times so you know that's important okay now in terms of terminology again these are chromatids each individual is a chromatid so this is an unduplicated these are duplicated okay sister chromatids now um this is the centromere that's holding the two together and what it's pointing to here is the genes that are here okay it's pointing to the genes that are identified here now each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids, which are joint copies of the original chromosome, and they're going to separate during cell division. The centromere, again, is this narrow waist, if you will, um, of, of the duplicated chromosomes, where the two chromatids are most closely attached. But what does this really look like? We're always showing you pictorial diagrams, but this, again, is an um, uh, image of a chromosome under a microscope and what you're able to see here is the centromere and the uh, sister chromatids. So now what we have, um, what we're illustrating now is what happens um, during cell division to the chromatids. So during cell division um, the two sister chromatids, they're going um, of each duplicated chromosome, they're going to separate and they're going to move into nuclei. Okay, So what you're seeing here is the sister chromatids separating into individual nuclei. And what's highlighted here is this uh, chromosomal DNA double helix. Okay, Showing you duplicated and it's showing you what happens um, and where this will end up in the individual um, nuclei. Now, once they separate the chromatids are now called chromosomes. Okay, so they're chromatids together. Once they separate, they're chromosomes again. 
Eukaryotic cell division consists of mitosis, cytokinesis. This is very important. You must understand this. <laughs> The eukaryotic cell division contains a mitosis, so it's the division of the genetic material in the nucleus, cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm. You need both. You need the genetic material in the nucleus to be divided, and you need the cytoplasm to divide. Okay? Now, gametes are produced by a variation of cell division called meiosis. Some people say meiosis. Okay? So we have mitosis, and we have meiosis. We also have cytokinesis, okay? Know the difference. Meiosis is gonna give non-identical daughter cells. And these daughter cells are gonna have only one set of chromosomes, half as many as the parent. 